So have you ever found yourself doing something that you just didn't want to do? You know, you, you found yourself saying, I am done with that. I'm not going to go back and do that ever again, right? Maybe it was some sort of vice that you're like, I'm done with, you know, cigarettes or, you know, alcohol. You went on some binge, you're like, I'm done with that. Or it's, you know, it's pornography or it's, you know, it's scrolling the internet and you know, on social media and you're just wasting time. You're like, I'm, I that was terrible. That was a waste of time. No, I was comparing myself to people and what they were doing. I feel, I feel awful. Man, maybe it's another person. You're like, I'm done with that person. They don't treat me well. They always discourage me. I'm done with that person. Maybe you, maybe you were buying things. So you're just like, I can't afford that. I don't really need that. But for some reason, I just find myself going to Amazon and buying these things. It's like, I'm done with that. I'm done with all this compulsive buying stuff. And yet, oftentimes, we find ourselves doing those things again, over and over and over again. Why do we do them? We don't want to do them, right? But we find ourselves doing them. It's almost as if we're a slave to these things. No one's holding the gun to our head, forcing us to do it, but we find ourselves doing them. Well, Paul, the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans says, yeah, it's because in many ways we are a slave to our sin. He says this in Romans 6, verses 19 and following. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer your body or parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness, so now offer them to slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. All right, so it's a choice we get to make, either slavery to sin or slavery to God. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, so the Apostle Paul says, okay, that there really are only three types of people in the world. There's only three types of people, okay? There's, there's people who can count and people who can't. Okay, no, 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 that doesn't make any sense. That's not what the Apostle Paul is saying, sorry. No, there's, there's two types of people in the world. There are people who are slaves to God, and there are people who are slaves to sin. And, and, and Paul, the Apostle Paul is saying, hey, Christ died for you. He, he paid the price so that you could be bought out of your slavery, so you could become not a slave to sinful desires and to, to, to terrible, you know, temptations and things that we don't want to do, but we could be slaves to righteousness, to God, to holy living. We could be free. But he says it's a choice that we have to make to live in that freedom, to choose that freedom in our every day-to-day -day life. You know, it kind of reminds me of history, the history of our country. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing the slaves in the South. And yet even after that, document was signed and even after the civil war was won by the north and the slaves couldn't have slavery anymore you know what happened to all the slaves in the south most didn't run to freedom most didn't run and you know got new jobs and you know just went and got hired by companies and factories and you know they most didn't just you know say oh i'm gonna go to college now you know why because they they had been slaves for their whole lives most couldn't read. Most didn't have, you know, marketable skills in the business world. What they knew was working the land. What they knew was slavery. And so even though they were free, most ended up staying to work the land that they were familiar with, doing the things that they were familiar with as slaves. And the same thing is true with us spiritually. Even though Christ has come down and he has, he has won the war, you know, there was a battle that was being, that was being waged between Satan and, and God. And Satan wanted us. He had enslaved us. But then Christ came and he died and he rose from the dead. And he won the battle. He rescued us. He has given us his freedom. And yet, because we've been enslaved for so long by our sin, because we've been trained by our sin, we've been conditioned by these sinful desires, by our greed, by our pride, by our lust. For so many years, we are just so accustomed to living that way, even though we're free to go, free not to do those things anymore. We oftentimes find ourselves repeating the same old sinful habits, behaviors as we did before. And so we need to 
retrain ourselves. You know, we, we need to surrender that white flag and say, God, you have won the war. You are now my master. So Satan's not my master anymore. I'm not my master anymore. Jesus, you are my master. I want to serve you today. Help me to serve you today. Tim Keller, the Christian author, he once said this. He says, Jesus is the only master who will satisfy you when you serve him and yet will forgive you when you fail him. Yes, Jesus is the only master who will satisfy you when you serve him and forgive you when you fail him. No other master will do that. Every sin that we can be enslaved by, every desire, whether it's a desire to, to make a lot of money, right? And you, you kind of find yourself being really greedy. You'll be a slave to that. You'll go to work and you'll work, 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 work in order to get more money and you'll end up probably taking advantage of other people to just get more money and you'll never have enough money. You'll always feel poor. Or you, you need power. You need security. And so you, you work, 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 work in order to be powerful and famous or to look good, to be healthy or whatever these things are that's going to make you feel secure and you'll never feel powerful. you never feel secure. You'll always feel insecure, like you're missing something. But when you say, no, I'm secure because my identity is in Christ because of his love and what he's done for me, then you'll be secure. And when you fail him and when you, you mess up, Jesus is there to forgive you and you pick you back up. You know, Jesus is the only master who will satisfy you when you serve him and will forgive you when you fail him. And so who are you serving today? Are, are you serving God? Have you waved the white flag and said, Jesus, you are in control not about me. It's about you. It's about you, how I can bring you glory, how I can serve other people. All right. And when we do that, that's when we will find true freedom. That's when we will become slaves to God. Yes. Slaves to righteousness and, and, and start experiencing the abundant life that Jesus died in order to give us. And so, you know, maybe, maybe today is a simple decision. Maybe it's a simple decision waking up or, you know, saying, I, Hey God, help me, give me the courage, give me the the energy that I need in order to go serve somebody today or, or give, give me the, the ability to swallow my pride so I can forgive that person who hurt me or help me to swallow my pride so I can go and tell that person that I'm sorry, the person that I lashed out to in anger. You know, maybe you struggle with anger. Maybe that's a, a, a sin that you're a slave to is your anger. You say, I need to say I'm sorry to my wife, to my spy, to my to my husband, to my kids, to a coworker, God, give me the courage to apologize today. Give me the courage to put somebody else first. And so I can be a slave to you, God, so you can get the glory. All right. And ultimately it will benefit us and help us experience more freedom from our sin in this life. All right. Let me pray for us and ask God to help us to walk in his freedom today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the freedom that he, he bought for us through his own blood by going to a cross, by rising from the dead. God, we know that that is our only hope. And eternally, we will live with you forever. And, and yet, even today, in this broken world, we can experience more of that freedom, more of that abundant life when we surrender our lives, our wills, everything to you, God. So, uh, yeah, we love you and we thank you for today. And we thank you for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.